Welcome to quarantine day two. Although it might be day three because I had one day in St. Peter, Port and Guernsey. I think that counts, but this is day two in Sark. I'm pretty much all set up now. As you can see behind me, this is where my work desk is, my writing desk with that sensational view. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. It's kind of hard to get work done, the view is so beautiful. I moved everything else around, kind of got myself set up in the kitchen, the bedroom, put all my stuff away, set up some lamps and some chest and drawers to put my clothes in. This is a little patio area. Well, there we go. This is the view from the patio. That is the edge of Big Sark. As I showed you yesterday, I'm just kind of settling in at the minute and I've got two weeks to get through, but that doesn't bother me too much because of the projects I'm going to be working on in that time. So for those of you who don't know, one of my main projects I'm trying to do is I'm writing my first travel book. And that's a collection of short stories that I've gathered from basically the last five years of my traveling life. I've been writing these for a number of months. If anyone subscribed to my Patreon, then you would have got a few samples of these stories. And that this is the same kind of style that I was writing in Patreon I'm gonna be doing in this book. And so I'm trying to bring all these stories together and basically get it to, uh, in effect, a publishable piece of work, which I can then send out to a publisher or a literary agent. So that's project number one. Project number two is that I am writing kind of a notebook of my time here in Sark um, and about what I'm doing on the island and what I'm going to be doing this summer, which that is probably more similar to what a travel novel would be like in terms of it's going to be a long form kind of book. I don't know whether anything will come from that and that's sort of only in its early stages at the minute I'm focusing mainly on the uh, my other travel stories at the moment but I am keeping notes every day comprehensive notes of what I've been doing and my thoughts and experiences of the place and at the end of the trip I may well try and bring something together there but I don't want to get too muddled between what my projects are at the moment then of course with the other stuff when I get out of quarantine is going to be the usual walk wild stuff so that's going to be me hiking around the islands, going swimming, going fishing, going cliff jumping, basically exploring Sark, but also Guernsey, hopefully Herm and Alderney as well if I have time. And uh, that'll be making videos for you guys and writing uh, articles and that, writing guides. Then I'm also trying to finish my journalism course, my travel journalism course. I've got a few projects left after that. Uh, sorry, a few assignments left. And then I'll hopefully pitch some articles to a few um, editorials as well while I'm out here. So we've got quite a few things to be getting on with. And so it feels like I'm very busy, even though I'm going to be in here for the next fortnight and then all the weeks after that. But it's going well so far. And I'll give, just give you a little tour, you, as you saw yesterday, of other parts of the house. But I'm just going to show you what my project is right now. I need to find the TV antenna. Going up to the loft space to see if I can fix the TV. I mean, the loft space itself is beautiful. So, but there you go, you can see the coupe just through there, and the windows through here as well. So, Amazing spot to work, but my work today is this room. I had mice in here last night. Rats, maybe. This is such an old house. I honestly don't know if this could just be filled with asbestos. To be honest, I don't really know what I'm looking for. Pests, clear, interesting. There is an antenna for sure but it is not connected to anything. Hmm. Anti-interference remote link and a loose plug. Maybe that's it. 
Do I want to go pulling out random plugs in the roof? Probably not. I feel as though I've been defeated. I didn't really try that hard, but I don't want to just go yanking out plugs. Welcome everyone to day five of my quarantine. I didn't record anything yesterday because I had a pretty awful headache, which to be honest hasn't really gone away yet. I don't know why, but anyway, today I thought, murky Maya behind me, I thought I would show you um, a bit around the house I'm quarantining in, of my grandparents' house. And I've shown you little snippets of this already, but I thought I'd give you kind of a tour of the walk I do. So a couple times a day, I just walk around these paths that stretch around the house and down to the cliffs and show you a bit what it's like to live on the island of Sark. <laughs> so this is usually completely overgrown, as you can imagine. Um, it's actually been cut back recently. The next door neighbors um, cut it back for us, which was very kind of them. And you know, the, the hedgerows and the ferns and the brambles, they all just grow so fast. And every year they just try and take the paths and we have to cut them back again. So actually there are a few paths that go either side of me along this cliff, which used to be paths down to the beach, but because of rock falls and because of the um, hedgerows growing over them, they've sort of disappeared now. But I'm at the end of the, well, I'm at the edge of the headland now. So this is kind of what it looks like when you come out. And it's probably, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's one of my favorite views in the world. It's absolutely fantastic. And you can see how close the house is behind me. And this is Little Sark, Luke, you're looking at right now. So if we're coming across here, I hope you can see, because there's, there's a bit of a glare in the sky, but directly over there is actually Grand Greve. So that's the massive beach you see down below you, the big bay. When it's, it's high tide now, but when it's low tide, you get this sensational sandbar that reaches all the way out. And above it is the coupe, which is um, the famous isthmus that links the two islands, the Big Sark and Little Sark. And that was built by the Germans during the occupation of the Channel Islands in World War II. So on the other side of the coupe is Big Sark, as you can see along here. Big Sark goes all the way along there and it kind of, it, you can't see more, but it stretches a lot further past this. And then there's the little point of Pilcher's Monument right at the end. And then there's Breku right across there, which is owned by the Barclay brothers who are not very popular in Sark to say the least. Um, there's a bit of history and politics behind that, which I won't go into now. Behind Breku is Herm, and just out of sight is Shell Beach, which is a massive yellow sandbar that pops out on the edge of Herm. To the left of it is Jetu, which is another small island, and then obviously is behind you can see Guernsey, and St Peterport is the cluster of buildings in the middle. Um, other islands in the Channel Islands you can't see is Lihu, which is a tidal island on the far side of Guernsey. And then there's Alderney, and then Jersey is probably the most famous one, it's the biggest one. And if I keep coming around here, that's also Little Sark, these cliff bits here. And you may be able to see there's a zigzag there, that's where a path used to be, which it's fallen away down the, uh, you can't get down the cliffs anymore. And then up there is uh, the bungalow, which is the older part of this house, which I'll show you in a second. So as I walk up, where I came, I'm gonna explain a little bit about why I'm in Sark, the history of it, at least my family, I mean. So, it was probably the 1960s, I think, when my grandparents decided to buy this patch of land. There was a, the bungalow, I think, was there, a really run down house, and they bought it, and, um, you know, my grandparents lived in Guernsey and my grandfather was an architect and they sort of fell in love with the island. And so over many years, my grandfather has built lots of the buildings on Sark. So he's designed, I think he designed the post office and the bank, I hope that's right. Um, a few other houses he designed as well. 
and the ones here. Uh, some of the houses on Big Sark and the one here. And then and pretty much every year they came here, my mum and my mum's sisters as children, and eventually my grandparents just moved here full time. And um, as kids, I came here every single summer as well. So we're very attached to the people of the island. We know everyone well. And it's just a very special place for us. And we have so many ties here, and, you know, we've been coming here for such a long time as a family. So we'll always love this place and cherish it. And obviously I've never shared this really with anyone. It's not been on Walk Wild, of course, because it's the first time I've been here in two years because of the pandemic. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to show you guys what it's like around here and how amazing this place is if you haven't heard of it before so as you can see here just walking across this is the view between the bungalow and the main house you've got a sailboat out there so around here we have the bungalow as you can see it's a really old building it's made of wood and with all the high winds and the winter storms that come through Channel Islands, you can imagine it gets pretty worn down. Um, we still stay in it, you know, we've always done, if there's overflow, because my cousins will come here as well. It's not just our family. So it's my mum and my mum's sister, all their kids, and we usually try and come together in the summer. So, so occasionally some of us have to be in this little shack here. And it is, you know, it's not glamorous. <laughs> It's, uh, it can be filled with, you know, we've, we've seen rats in here sometimes. There's lots of insects and bugs and cobwebs. It's not always hot water working. The doors don't work. The, you know, the wind comes through the windows. It's lumpy beds, smells of mold. I'm just being critical, but I absolutely love it. It is a really old building. It's just the reality of it, but it's so special for us. And, you know, we absolutely adore this place as a family. Um, it's called Clos Fontaine. It's the name of this little bungalow. And as long as I can remember, it's looked like this. I, I honestly don't think, at least in the last 20 or 25 years, that this has been changed around much. It's just sort of, you know, after so many years of wind and rain and sun, it, it, it just, it kind of rots through, as you can see. So it's a really big job. And, you know, as a family, we might try and see if we can fix it up, but it's not gonna be done overnight, that's for sure. And here is the sitting room. And yeah, you've got another amazing view out there. One of many in this area. When I mentioned about overgrown shrubbery and hedgerows, there used to be a path that linked from the bungalow through these woods that I'm walking through now, but it's completely overgrown. I just went to look at it yesterday and you wouldn't have even known there was a path there. That's how much nature reclaims itself in this area. And especially the nature around here, it's this really thick brambles and gorse and ferns really sturdy plants so you can't just make your way through it what i'm walking along now this is actually a new path this wasn't here or maybe again it was overgrown the last few years i've been here but it was uh kind of cut out by the tractor um we had the extension on the house which i showed you earlier the tractor had to come down and it had to come through this field to sort of get to the front of the house on the edge of the cliff obviously but the path I'm following links up to a field so it appears at this field here I haven't spent much time up around this field to be honest it's always been sort of just a bit of a not an empty space but a bit away from the house and you can't actually see any of the views from here it's a bit like a surrounded by trees and that but i mean it's still just so beautiful it feels like you could be in the south of france looking at it now and you know i guess it's not unreasonable since we're pretty close to france here much closer than we are to the uk at least but i'm coming up now well i'm actually walking parallel to the bike path and the um it's right next to us that cuts through little sark so i'm about to reach the top of the path which is where you enter to get to the house so we're approaching the front gate to Fairmont Day. There it is, the old green gate. Painted that a few times over the years. <laughs> the latch on it is just, the sound of it alone brings back memories because it's such a heavy latch that clanks down. I always think about Fairmont Day. 
and you can see the dust path there that's for the tractors and the horse and carts and the bikes to come up and down to the left is Le Coupe and Big Sark to the right is down into Little Sark if you turn around this is the path leading me to Vemmel there you can just see over the hedgerow Guernsey in the background so this is quite nicely tended this path again the people who cut the other paths did this one they did a great job um, it's like a lovely avenue leading you up to the house really this is the old bike shed we keep stuff we obviously keep bikes in there so you know you can't drive anywhere in Sark it's all bikes and walking and then along this row lots of blackberry bushes and we often pick blackberries from either side of the hedgerows and from up in the field that you just saw and with that my auntie often makes blackberry jam I'm now back up top Behind me, that path leads through to the bungalow and the field. It just connects with that path down there. And then here is the entrance to Vermonde. There we go. There's the little sign of Vermonde. And there's our house. There's another path that comes around the side of the house. And this path links back up with the pool, which pretty much is gonna complete the route that I usually walk. So I'll take you back up. And you've seen sort of all angles of them one day. In Sark, when we dispose of food, we do it a little differently. This is the feeding of the seagulls. And now we wait. Hello, hello, day six, quarantine. What am I up to? Well, I'm getting slightly restless now. Um, I was working up until about two o'clock. No, later than that, about three o'clock. And then I kind of fell asleep at my desk. Then I crawled onto the floor and fell asleep on the floor. Not really because I'm tired, but just because I wanted something different to do. So I just decided to stop working. Actually, coincidentally, after that happened, I then went on my laptop and then it basically crashed, which is quite scary. I don't really know what's going to happen there. About a million um, like FaceTime screens started popping up. The, the green light started flashing on the camera and I was like, am I being hacked? Um, but I'm not even on Wi-Fi, so I don't know how it's possible. Anyway, I sh turned it off and um, restarted it. And it seems to be okay now, but I thought I should just end for the day. So I've been sitting out here um, by me, reading in the sun. So I can't exactly complain. And I'm not complaining because, I mean, the location I'm in is hardly a boring spot to be, but... I would wish I could get out now and just explore a bit more of the island and go swimming or something because it's a hot day today. But uh, yeah, I'm just really busy with my writing. I think I've got maybe one more short story to do for my book. And then I've got a really good collection together and I'm going to try and look at them, edit them as a whole piece of work and see, see if I can start moving forwards with that. I made it to write another couple stories, made it to cut some out, but we're getting there, which is good news. So that's all for day six, and I will give you another update tomorrow.